Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Ghostly Tales for Ghastly Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called... Bogman. A sharp, icy wind whistled between the six rocks that had been laid out in a rough circle. On each rock sat a man, powerfully built with broad muscular shoulders, arms hanging like elephants' trunks below his knees, and thick matted hair clinging to his short body. Six spears lay unattended by a slab of rock in the centre of the circle, and on the slab lay the body of the victim, another man bound hand and foot by thorny ropes. He lay silent, unmoving, while his captors decided his fate, shouting to make themselves heard in a strange language that sounded more animal than human. A sabre-toothed tiger roared from its lair in the mountains, and then fell silent. The Stone Age court was in session. Marg, the son of Fame, lay terrified on the cold slab of rock, knowing that if he were found guilty of stealing cattle from his brother, he would surely be put to death. A thundercloud rumbled in the black sky and spat out its first drops of rain. The eldest of the captors stood up and walked towards Marg. He picked up a spear and held it high above his head. The others fell silent. Then with one almighty blood-curdling scream, he drove his heel into the mud, sprang forward and brutally plunged the spear into the bound man's thigh. Marg was guilty. The driving rain stung Marg's flesh as they dragged him bleeding from the rock. He struggled briefly, but it was hopeless. They raised him onto their shoulders and ran with him down to the edge of the peat bog. They were laughing now. They swung him once. Marg tried to cry out. They swung him twice. He closed his eyes. And as they swung him for a third time and let him go, dropping him like a stone into the middle of the deadly sucking peat, he vowed with all the strength left in his body that one day he would find these men and take his revenge on them. Then the bog closed over his head, and he was gone. Helen! Helen! Where are you? The sound of dishwashing carried up the stairs as clearly as a rifle shot. Helen sat tight. Helen, will you come downstairs this instant and help me dry these breakfast things? She turned the page of her comic and blocked her ears with loo paper. Helen! was a bit of a shirker. Every day her mother would ask her to help clear the table, and every day she'd say she'd love to, but she just had to go to the loo first. Why is it, said her mother, that whenever there's work to be done in this house, you always have to go upstairs? Yes, added Damien, her elder brother, and leave me to do it all by myself. Helen hurled herself at Damien and beat him feverishly about the head with her cereal spoon. If I didn't go to the loo, I might have an accident, she said, trying to squeeze a couple of crocodile tears from bone-dry eyes. If you do go to the loo again, you will have an accident, shouted Damien, because I'll pull your head off and bash your brains in. Oh, stop it, shouted their mother. Helen, in future, you will stay here until the washing up is finished, because if you don't, Helen laughed. If I don't, what? She cheeked. Because if you don't, and you continue to spend half your waking hours on the loo, then as sure as night turns to day, the bog man will get you. <laughs> Helen's mother had worked herself up into quite a lather. She struggled to snap off her rubber gloves, hurled the tea towel at Damien, and left the kitchen in a flurry of soap suds. The tap gurgled and spat out a tiny drop of black slime. Why don't you listen to anything she says, said Damien, who was smirking in the corner. Did she say bog man? asked Helen, who had only been half listening when her mother had exploded. 
Who's he? Damien assumed an air of annoying superiority. Well, if you don't listen, you'll never know, he said, slamming the door as he left the room. The bog man, said Helen, rolling the word around her tongue like a gobstopper. Yes, I like the sound of that. As she spoke, a second glob of black slime trickled from the tap and hung like a piece of elastic, bouncing up and down until it snapped. Helen didn't notice it. She got up, poured her mug of tea into the sink and went out to school, leaving the dregs to congeal and block up the plug hole. In the waste pipe underneath the plug hole, something was dripping, but it was not tea. It was a black, sticky substance like diabolic hair gel, which slithered down the sides of the pipe and trailed off into the cloudy grey sewer water which flowed below Helen's street. That night, while Helen's father was cooking supper, Helen asked him a question. Who's the bog man? she said. Who? replied her father. His mind was on the cheese grater. Bog man! Oh, yes. Yes, I think I read about that somewhere, he said. Helen waited. Her father carried on grating. Oh, honestly, why can't parents take a little more interest in their children? Helen thought. She persisted. What have you read about Bog Man? Do you want supper or not? snapped her father. No, not until you've told me about Bog Man. Oh, all right then, said Helen's father, who had just grated the end off his little finger and was glad of the break. But not until you stop rattling that cutlery drawer. Helen was slightly surprised at her father's sudden outburst. I'm not rattling anything, she protested. Helen's father frowned. He was sure that he had heard a rattling noise. It had sounded like a handful of chopsticks spinning madly in a tumble dryer. There was a slight pause while Helen studied her father's confusion. When she judged the moment to have passed, she tugged at his apron. Well, go on, then she said. Tell me about the bog man. Helen's father blinked and muttered, Oh, yes. Then added more firmly, Six months ago, when they were building that new sewage works up the road, some workman dug up a skeleton. A live one? Helen's father looked at her curiously. Sometimes, he said, I wonder if God forgot to include the batteries for your brain. Honestly, a live skeleton. Well, I was only asking, said Helen. No, it was not live. In fact, it was very dead. Had been for over two and a half thousand years. They reckon it was the skeleton of some poor chap who was killed in the Stone Age. Well, so how come he was still there then? The peat bog said Helen's father. It preserved him in almost perfect condition. Oh, said Helen. So why did Mum tell me that if I spend too much time on the loo, the bog man will get me? Well, it's just a story, said her father. They say that this skeleton is wandering through the sewers looking for the men who drowned him in the bog. Has he found them? Well, of course not. They died over two thousand years ago as well. So why might he attack me? Because you spend too much time in the lavatory when you should be helping your mother, said her father. Now can I please get back to my cauliflower cheese? Cauliflower cheese and jam sponge. The meal was a family favourite, and they sat in silence, shoveling down great wadges of it. The only problem with cauliflower cheese and jam sponge is that it does not magically cook itself. On the draining board stood a mountain of dirty pans and dishes. Helen took one look and got up from the table. Oh, just got to go to the loo, she declared as she beat a hasty retreat towards the door. Not so fast, said her father, who was having difficulty keeping his eyes open. What about the washing up? Well, yeah, yes, I'll do it when I get back. Helen lied. She saw her father's eyes suddenly slam shut. Brian, scolded Helen's mother, for once in your life behave like her father. But it had no effect. 
Helen's father, exhausted by the hard work involved in preparing and devouring such a huge supper, had fallen asleep, face down in the remains of his custard. Helen seized the opportunity and made good her escape. She reached the landing in double quick time, hurtled into the loo and bolted the door behind her. Now she could read her comic, the one she had secretly stashed away behind the cistern. She sat on the loo and rapidly became engrossed. A strange rattling noise broke the silence. That would be her mother doing the dishes, thought Helen, and she carried on reading. Then she heard it again, only this time it was closer, and it definitely wasn't dishes. Dishes didn't have feet, and she could hear footsteps. It was coming from underneath her, from inside the loo. She jumped off and lifted the seat. It looked normal enough, just like loos always look. Pretty boring, in fact. But there was that noise again, rattling footsteps and a low, rhythmical moaning that sounded like an animal in distress. A sharp blast of icy wind whistled under the door and Helen felt something wet on her cheek. It was a drop of rain. She looked up and saw a heavy black thundercloud hanging over the light bulb. Suddenly it went dark. The rain came faster now and lashed against her face and arms. A foul smell of rotting wood filled her nostrils. She shouted out, What do you want? And the voice replied, I want my revenge. Downstairs, Helen's mother was trying to do the washing up. But something strange was happening. Black, sticky goo was bubbling out of her taps, filling the sink and running down her easy white kitchen unit onto the floor. Damien was giggling again. Helen's father was still asleep. From the depths of the U-bend came a fearsome cry that turned Helen to stone. She knew what was happening. She knew what was down that pan. I'll do the washing up, she bleated hoping that this might appease the demonic force that was out to get her. Five bony fingers suddenly shot round the bend and burst out of the water. A huge explosion ripped the cistern off the wall. Helen was sent spinning backwards by the jet of water spurting from the ruptured pipe. She wiped the water from her eyes and screamed, I am Marg, said the skeleton who had just come up through the loo. And I am Helen, wept Helen, as the skeleton's fingers closed around her arm. Helen's father woke with a start. By now the black sticky stuff had not only filled up most of the kitchen, but it had also oozed down inside his trousers. He squelched to his feet and frantically tried to bail it out through the back door with a saucepan. What is it? shouted Helen's mother. I don't know, he shouted back. It looks like Pete. Damien stopped giggling. Helen, he yelled. Helen's upstairs by herself. But of course, Helen was not by herself. You're the bog man, she stammered. Your mother called me, hissed the skeleton. No, no, she was making it up. She didn't know you were real. She just wanted me to do the washing up. And your father knows who killed me. No, pleaded Helen. He's just my dad. You come with me cried Bogman, grabbing Helen by her hair and dragging her back towards the loo. Helen struggled pathetically. But I can't swim, she blubbed. Don't throw me in the sewers. But the skeleton was in no mood for feeble excuses. You must die, he moaned. Then your parents are sure to tell me where I can find my killers. As the first hair on Helen's head touched the churning fountain of peat and sewage, the door burst open. A flash of lightning sparked across the light bulb and Mark twisted round to face Helen's parents. Where are my killers? He said, stretching out his bony fingers towards Helen's mother's throat. It's Bogman, 
shouted Helen. Helen's mother screamed as Bogman's laughing white teeth flashed towards her. Damien ran into his bedroom and locked the door. Helen rolled up her comic and threw it to her father. Her father brought it crashing down on Marg's head. Only it wasn't a comic. It was a spear, a stone age spear. The skeleton crumbled under the weight of the heavy wooden shaft. The thundercloud rolled away and the loo stopped bubbling black peat. Marg's powdered remains floated to the ground as dust. They settled on the thick carpet of soggy peat and very slowly sank, just as Marg had done two thousand years before in the peat bog. Helen looked at her parents. Her father was staring blankly at his empty hands. The Stone Age spear had vanished just as mysteriously as it had appeared in the first place. Her mother had her head in her hands and was weeping. The house was in an awful mess. It took the family three weeks to clear it up, but for once Helen did not have to be asked to help. In fact, she shoveled more peat than anyone else. Marg never found the six men who killed him. He was swept up with the peat and thrown onto the back of a dust cart. And that, you might think, was that. Well, you may be right. But who's to say that Bogman won't come back to find his killers? Well, I for one am not brave enough to make such a prediction. After all, he survived for two thousand years in a peat bog, and now all that holds him is a black plastic bin liner and a few tons of earth down at Helen's local rubbish tip. So if I were you, I'd check out the loo before you use it because he may yet return. <laughs>